All right, so this is part three. Um, it might be the last one. You'll see why in a moment. Um, so basically, we got the data into the database, into a document model. Uh, so how do we make it into embeddings, and how do we use it? So after the document is created, uh, Laravel uh, has events built in. So we, you know, potentially what I want to do is listen to those. And um, when a document uh, triggers an event, the project it's related to uh, can have numerous transformations related to it that can then react to the uh, event. So for example, um, in this case, the embedding uh, transformation uh, triggers and it knows what a document model is, so it knows it has content and uh, it just takes that content and, and gets embeddings and returns the embeddings. Um, so yeah, that's just how simple it is. Now, you can uh, and this is where it could be great to have another pattern where it's like this is a chunk embedding or something that breaks up the content with overlapping results and then makes embedding so you get a very nice overlap of content so you don't um, uh, so you, you kind of uh, you have smaller content for prompts which is going to come up in a moment uh, but you have enough overlapping information to help um, fill in any gaps well that is it so embedding was really that simple, other than the fact that I could have done better with chunking the content into smaller blocks, which again isn't that hard. Uh, I'll, I'll cover that as I as I add that to the system. Um, so, but how do we query the data? So uh, let's just think about uh, let's just check in about terminology because I'm going to say things that uh, sound technical and they're not. I just want to show you uh, what they are. So when I say models, those are just eloquent models, and when I say transformations. Those, that's just an idea. Uh, in again, layer, um, Langchain is the foundation to what I'm trying to do here. Uh, they have a Python version of this, and I'm just trying to learn from them. Uh, but these transformations uh, or transformers uh, will take the data uh, in, depending on what you, uh, which ones you use, uh, they can do stuff with it, like pull uh, HTML out of it, or uh, you know, turn them into Markdown, or uh, you know, uh, do the embedding stuff. Now. All this stuff you can do with PHP, I know, but uh, that's the point. Like, sometimes it might be quicker to do it this way, or um, sometimes, like, there's ones in, in LangChain where you search Wikipedia. There's ones where, like, well, that will come later, but my point is there's so many different ready-to-go um, uh, plugins. Uh, I don't know what they call them there, but basically um, tools is what they call them that we can make a collection like that and just make it easy to plug in. So source, um, sources are just things, again, like these plugins where uh, you can get files from S3, websites, local files, images, etc. And then projects are eloquent models, smell, spelled horribly, uh, that, you know, these projects are where you can kind of contain the, the context of the information. So a project might be around a PDF, it might be around that website, it might be around um, uh, anything, really. And then that project gets documents added to it, and those documents become what we start thinking about and searching around. Now, um, resources, it's just, I don't have a, a good one for this, and basically, how do, how do um, once the user has their data in a, in a project and documents, how do they get it out? And so we can easily set up uh, these resources or ways that uh, we can serve data, APIs, most simple one, a UI, widgets, uh, things that they could plug into their site, like a little chat bot or whatever. Um, and these can also do things uh, with the question, transforming them, making prompts, uh, and doing the stuff we um, will show in a moment. But they can, this is coming out the other side, which I guess will be the next video. Is like, what do we do with this? So, um, but one more thought, too, about transformations is that, uh, you know, again, um, there's a model called projects. All this is under team, so your team has privacy to projects. And those projects then, because they're Laravel models, make events, uh, like created, and then we can just attach in sorting order transformations, and they just do whatever you put there um, uh, in, in that order. So it's a, just a really nice, uh, clean way with queues and batches to just do what you need to do with the data. Now the user queries the data. Um, here we'll just cover the prompts using the chat API, pusher, and some to-do items. Uh, now 
users' questions get vectorized. So we just use um, the embed API again, take the user's question, put it over there. Now, this stuff takes time. Uh, that's why Pusher comes in and WebSockets, not Pusher, they're, it's like the Kleenex there. Uh, but WebSockets and the use of like um, allowing the request to go in the background into a queue, uh, allowing the user to have not, not have a timeout, um, but they get to kind of just experience something. Uh, in one site, I built a nice waiting thing, widget that would show uh, some suggestions like video games. Uh, while you're waiting, uh, think about this. So you can really do a lot here um, by just getting it off the... Um, off the uh, into into um, into the queue system, so yeah, the the we get the embedding, uh, and then um, well, here's a side thought. We're gonna take this question and do something with it, but one thing I haven't and I've read a little bit about this, and there's there's ways there's tools for this, but we have to think what is this question really about? Is it searching the database or is it about the data? And if it's about the data, uh, it's going to be less um, effective to query the database. So, um, uh, you know, that one I don't, I don't have a fleshed out answer for, but it's something uh, I've just been reading about and thinking about. In my example, it's a lot of search related stuff. So using the PG vector, uh, Laravel vector library, um, we can just query the data. So we make the vector embedding, we uh, make the class around it. Um, and we instantiate the class vector and then we use that in our query. Um, in the query, I just pulled it from their docs, so I haven't even like uh, fine-tuned it. But yeah, it's just a select raw with embedding um, and we pass it in not as a, as a, you know, a, a little safer way of uh, passing it in. Um, and, uh, and that's it. So it's, it's pretty neat how simple they made this and we get our, here's your uh, results that are within the range and therefore we have some content. Now with all that data I combine them together trying to keep a mind on tokens and whatnot and I haven't there's actually a library in Python that ChatGPT keeps recommending to me but we don't I have to find one in PHP uh, that copies it but basically the hardest struggle for me is keeping the context down so that because when you make a request you only have and this is going to change so much uh, they say you only have 4,000 something tokens and in that request you the question takes away from those so the response is 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 uh, the tokens left over after the, the space the, the question takes up and 4,000 tokens is on average like four characters um, so depending on the language. So my point is like, you don't want to send too big of a question. So in like one project, I make a TLDR of all the different content chunks, put them together, then make a TLDR of that and send it over. Uh, so you have to find what works. And I guess this would be a nice plugin too, like the TLDR plugin or the, um, you know, like how to approach it so we can just plug things in and um, create that final output. So in, it just depends on the project. Like one of them was a, you know, um, it, it was okay to do a TLDR of all the TLDRs where I could see with this one it would lose a lot of data. But um, yeah, it's tricky. I don't know. All right. So then we got to ask, is this the first question? If this is the first question, I create a system uh, role or in, in context. So, you know, I put it through the prompt token in the prompt template. I, uh, I set up the state of the uh, chat and I let the kind of uh, system know that, you know, this is what you, who you are and this is what I'm trying to get you to do. And uh, people even put in this particular prompt, hey, don't deviate from the data I have. If you don't have an answer in the data, just say I don't have an answer. So you can really uh, help fine tune how uh, uh, OpenAI uh, responds. Um, so, so that's something there. Um, but um, I'll, I'll go, but we're, so actually I'll, I'm going to go to the next one, but then I'll come back to something here about messages. Um, so, but just a note, uh, I had a lot of trouble with PHP's library when sending the question. It worked in the playground, which I advise to use it as much as you can. The playground is OpenAI's playground area that then gives you code uh, in curl or Python 
to show you how to um, then use what you just asked in the U, in the UI. And then that same code uh, didn't work in PHP, um, even though the curl worked in Postman. So it was interesting. But when I did some fine tuning, one of the suggestions was to do this to so show an end to your question, and then it started working. So I got really lucky there after a lot of head scratching. So, um, so if this is not the first question, so back to that, um, we we have to get all the saved messages. So I'm saving messages to a database table called message, and I'm tracking who it belongs to, what project it belongs to, what the content of the question, and what role is the question? Is it user? Is it um, uh, a system? So it's the first question, or is it uh, assistant? So it's like one of the corresponding questions. So at that point, uh, we can then take the messages of the of the history, uh, output them, and sort them. And then give and, and continue with it, or start, you know, continue in this case with the chat. Um, so again, role user, role system, role assistant. It, it's pretty easy, um, but there's some things to consider here. Is that tokens still matter? Like you can't send 20 messages back with content that goes over the 4,000 token mark. So what do you do? You could TLDR the content. You could only grab the system one in the last three. Like, you know, these are the details that would be nice to get to a place where it's really easy to tweak. Um, and then all the messages are just sent to the open AI in a, in, and create a stream. Uh, again, everything's surrounded around a project with this idea. So the project has uh, documents related to it about that particular web page. And I send all these questions. Um, in all the questions, again, not just questions, but I send, all, I send the questions with the previous assistance in the context. And then we get a stream, which is the you know, fun part because you can mess around with that in the UI. Um, now, this is what the messages look like by the time I send it to the uh, uh, API. Uh, you know, roll, 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 and then all the content. So, yeah, it just that's, you know, basically the gist of it. Um, Knowing that again, it's taking up size. We got to figure out how to trim that. How to send only so much back, uh, you know, to give it enough context to, to give a good answer and have history. And the user can come back to the system tomorrow and keep asking questions or reset them all. Um, the fun part is we stream back the results. So you know, um, it comes back like, you know, if you were to out output this, it's like one letter at a time. So we're just taking a moment to jumble, you know, to. Um, what's a, you know, to basically buffer them up so that uh, it looks a little bit more like a sentence. Uh, and this needs a lot of tightening up, but just a, it was just a quick example of how I can just, um, you know, reply. And, and, and so the chat reply event is what dispatches it to WebSockets, which happens to be Pusher, uh, being used here to help show the message on the screen, um, you know, what, while the user is waiting. It's just not like a big dump, um, so, which is really nice. Um, so, um, let's see. So basically, um, that is it. Now I'm going to show some other ideas about how to output this as an API. Um, but this basically shows the foundation to, to working with data, to giving context to the open AI system, context being the most keyest thing of all, and then how to hopefully do it well, uh, in time as you learn to to, to, to give it the right context without overdoing the token count. If that token count goes to 20 something thousand soon, then it might not matter as much, but at least you have the foundation here to start conversing with it. Uh, but the thing is, like when I look at Lane Chain, um, and when I was thinking, oh crap, I have to switch frameworks, it reminded me like there, there there's no reason to switch. PHP has a lot of that stuff, and, and Laravel has a lot of it just ready to go with events and broadcasting and queues. We have a lot of this. Um, uh, these flows just so easy. Uh, the new process integration with uh, Symfony's process is nice because if we did need to use a Python library, for example, we could do it at the command line and then, uh, you know, we could then get the results really easily. So we have a lot of, uh, a lot of um, <laughs> that, like we got, we got what we need to make this really nice. And a good user front end with uh, inertia or uh, Livewire, we can really great make great user experiences. Uh, I use Jetstream for this to help make teams, so teams have projects. So you can really see like, oh, you can't see this 
these messages because they belong to this project and you can't see these documents because they belong to this project and you can't see this project because you don't belong to this team so really quickly you have a, a, a segmentation of your uh, of your data all right uh, that's it uh, one more video to come about resources but that's gonna be a ways off because I need to um, to make the actual code and then uh, tighten up some things Thank you.